So one of the core conceptual concerns of computer science is how long does it take to solve a certain problem using a certain approach? Keep in mind, algorithms are not the algorithm implementations. An algorithm is a series of steps that we take to solve a problem. The implementation is in Java code or C++ or Go or some other programming language, but the algorithm is really something that exists on a higher plane. Um, when we analyze algorithms, we're usually uh, looking at code, and we will in this class. Uh, later on in other courses, you won't do that. You'll analyze algorithms in a more abstract way. In this class, we look at code when we analyze algorithms, but I don't want you to uh, confuse the algorithm with the implementation, right? That's something that we talked about a little bit in the past, and we'll continue to disambiguate going forward. Um, so when we analyze an algorithm, the typical thing that we're concerned with is how many resources does that algorithm consume when it runs? And those resources, uh, some of the more important ones that we'll talk about, the typical one we focus on is time. How long does it take for the algorithm to run? Or how many different computer operations are required? Uh, how many steps are required in the algorithm? Because that translates into the amount of time it's gonna take. Algorithms that take a long time to run sometimes aren't feasible to use in on a real problem. We might need to find a faster way. Um, the other resource that we'll think about is memory. And, and this is a secondary concern for us, but there's a couple of times where we'll stop and we'll actually think about how much space does a particular algorithm need as it executes. But our main focus is on time. Um, when computer scientists alg analyze algorithms in a broader sense, they're frequently thinking about other types of resources, like how much disk space would it take, or how much information does it need to transmit over the network as it runs. And those it really depend on the kind of algorithm that you're analyzing and the context in which you're analyzing it. Um, when we talk about algorithms, you'll see in the Wikipedia definition, it goes on and on, and then it says, um, in theoretical al analysis of algorithms, it is common to estimate their complexity in the asymptotic sense, to estimate the complexity function for an arbitrarily large input. Um, and we use a big O notation, or sometimes big theta, big omega. Um, and so let's talk about what that is. Um, what we'll do when we analyze algorithms in this class. So the analysis of algorithms is so important in computer, scientists, uh, computer science that you're gonna see it over and over and over again. We introduce it in CS125. You'll get more practice with it in CS173 and CS225 and CS374. And you see it at different levels of complexity and at different sort of levels of detail. Um, what we're doing, since this is the first pass, is we're gonna stay at a very, very high conceptual level. But what we do when we talk about algorithms in this class is we try to put them into categories. Those categories are defined by how the algorithm performs as its inputs get very large. We'll talk a little bit about why this is interesting, but uh, just briefly speaking, usually in order to run an algorithm, there's a little bit of setup that's required. There might be a couple of steps required to initialize the loop or whatever. And then the loop runs and runs and runs and runs for a certain number of times. And then there might be a few steps left when we're done. We typically don't care about this couple of steps at the beginning and the couple of steps at the end because they don't uh, increase as the problem gets bigger. But that loop that we run in the middle, that might take longer and longer and longer. And so when we talk about asymptotic behavior, that allows us to ignore certain parts of the algorithm that really eventually don't contribute very much to how long it takes to run when the problem gets reasonably sized. So this is why we talk about kind of the behavior of an algorithm at the limit as the problem gets bigger and bigger is because it allows us to kind of zero in on the most salient features of the algorithm and not get distracted by some of the smaller details. So we're gonna make this much, much more concrete. So if this is not making sense yet, that's cool. Don't worry about it. We're gonna see piece of code after code and algorithm and after algorithm and we're gonna talk about you know, exactly why they take certain a certain amount of time to run and things like that. And we'll get a lot of practice with thinking about this. We'll also try to do some measurements along the way. There's a couple of places where we might actually be able to measure how long something takes to run and actually get a sense of uh, not just the, an estimate of how long it would take, but an actual measurement from the computer itself. Um, but again, so this is our first pass with this. And what I really want to focus on is developing some intuition, uh, particularly in thinking about what features of algorithms lead to certain uh, complexity behavior, right? So for example, when we talk about algorithms that go through an array or go through a list, any algorithm that has to look at every element in the list is gonna need to take longer and longer and longer as the list gets bigger, right? And it's actually linear in the size of the list. 
Now, I might have to do other things with the items in the list that might cause the algorithm to even be slower and slower as it goes, but at minimum, anything that has to look at every item in a list, for example, uh, can't take uh, less than a certain amount of time. And so that's the kind of intuition that we want to be developing as we go forward and start to look at algorithms and um, algorithm implementations and talk about their performance using these big O categories.